Hello everyone, and welcome to part three of our Build a Clip tutorial. Let's quickly revisit some of the things we've done so far. We started by building a custom clip that we put on a brand new dashboard. We added a label component and played with a few options around text alignment, font, and color. In part two, we added a little bit more info into this clip by adding a separator component to introduce some visual separation between the different parts of our clip. We added a simple bar chart, and with the same data source that's showing this total revenue, we showed the same information over date and brought in some other elements of the data source to show both revenue from the products we've sold and quantity of products sold on two different axes. So some simple data manipulation options to show this data exactly as we envisioned in the way that we think our users can most easily interpret it. Today in part three, we are going to introduce the concept of indicators to introduce other visual elements that make certain parts of the clip jump out to users. We are going to introduce a table component and also show you how to use drill down, which is a really powerful feature to help your users engage with the data and dig into only the information that matters to them. Let's get started. So let's edit this clip that we've been working on. And with some of the components that we've already built, let's look at indicators. You'll find the indicators panel on every element of the clip that you're building. You can set up indicators on the series of a bar chart, the x-axis of a bar chart, a particular column of a table. Today, we are going to use them on our label. So as of now, the label is showing just the information that we wanted to, which is our revenue data over in column S. An indicator lets you set up very simple logic that will change the look of the data based on that logic. So let's try. We'll say if our label is greater than 10 million, then perform a certain action. We can change the color. Let's display an icon. So you want to be careful with indicators because you only want to call out the information that requires immediate action. You don't want to overwhelm your users with information. Our logic is saying if the label is greater than 10 million, show a star. We want to immediately tell people this is a good thing. We'll change the placement of the star to be on the right, and we're finished. And you can also set up multiple indicators. So we've set up one for positive performance. Let's set up another one in case our results are not so good. So let's say if the label is less than 5 million, then change the color to red. And this won't fire for us in this case, but if our revenue number ever dips, the entire text string here will immediately turn red, our star will be removed, and this should jump out to the users as something that requires immediate attention. In our layout grid, which if you recall in video two, gives us a number of independent workspaces with which we can operate to build and show our data in the best way, Let's add another row at the bottom. So you can see this row has three cells by default. If I click on one, I can choose to span it across all three columns. What I wanted to do was introduce another separator here. And we'll format it the same way as the first one. We'll keep the same font color. And let's introduce a fifth row as well where we will build a table. So we'll again choose to span this across all three columns. And from our components palette on the right, we'll find and drag in the table component. And here we'll take a slightly different approach to show you how we would set up drill down. Drill down is a really nice feature to introduce um, the possibility of engagement from your users. There's a lot of information in this data set. Today, I want to show dates. I want to show our team members' names and revenue. 
I'll take some really simple steps here. First, let's format this revenue column as a currency. And let's introduce a results row where we sum this data and show the total. On our date column, you can see that in its current state, the data source is showing us the year, month, and day that each of these transactions took place. So very granular information. And if I scroll right down to the bottom of the data preview, we can see that this data set is reasonably large. So a lot of information here that we're gonna to show to our users. Let's clean this up a little bit. Um, instead of showing year, month, and day, when, I'm, when I've clicked on the date column, let's navigate over to the properties panel. And you can see that Clipfolio does a pretty good job. You should always check this to validate that it's accurate, but we do a pretty good job of inferring the date format. And you can see here that we've got it right. As, a, as an editor here, I can override how this data is displayed. So if I click this dropdown, you'll see that I've got tons of different options. I think showing this data in the format of month and year is a good option here. We're gonna be able to roll this up and aggregate this data nicely for our users to tell a simple story. And this date format, just the month abbreviation and the year is nice and, and compact. So that's a good approach for our dates and you've got tons of other options here. You wanna choose the one that makes the most sense for your data set. Sometimes just showing the month is the right approach. Sometimes you wanna show very granular information if your data source contains time and things like that. So lots of options. At the table level, let's specify that we're gonna use the first values as the column header. Now we're cleanly showing date, sales rep, and revenue. And let's remove this last column here. So in order to introduce drill down, I'm gonna see that option at the table level. So I'll click on table in our component tree and I see the drill down panel. I will only see this on the table component, but let's see how we can take advantage. So we will enable drill down and we have the ability to specify the different levels that we're grouping by. So I can first group by date and I'll always have the option to configure what happens with the other elements at this level. So I can hide the sales rep column because it is text. I have the other options to count it or count the distinct number of reps. We'll count them in this case. And let's add another drill level. Now we want to group by the sales reps. And here for our last column, we can specify how to aggregate this data. Let's leave it as sum. So we won't see the full impact of drill down while in the editor, but I think we've done everything correctly here. Let's save and exit and see how this looks to our users. Perfect. So from an extremely granular data set with tons of information on different transactions, we've aggregated this data in a nice clean way. I'm able to choose a specific time period and see all of the performance for our different reps. The totals row for our table will always adjust based on our selection. So if we choose a specific month and drill down to the more granular view, our results row will always be accurate. That brings us to the end of the third Build a Clip tutorial. Today, we introduced a few new working areas in our layout grid so that we could add a second separator. We matched the formatting of the first. We brought in a table to illustrate the power of the group, sort, and filtering options. And then we took a slightly different approach to introduce the concept of drill down. Overall in this series, we looked at several different chart types, a label, a bar chart, and a table. We looked at the concepts of indicators, multiple series on a chart, and the simple and powerful options you have access to through what we call applied actions, grouping, sorting, and filtering. I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.